Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's give him a praise clap for his goodness tonight. We appreciate the Lord. We magnify him for being in the house of God one more time, thanking God for another day. This is another day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I want to thank God for the saints of God. I want to thank God for those of you that are watching by Facebook, those watching by YouTube, listening by podcast. I want you to hit that YouTube or hit that like button. That, yes, go ahead and subscribe. You might as well like it. It's going to help you out anyway in the long run. We just thank God for being saved, for being delivered, having a mind to live right. Amen. Can, I get, can the church say amen? Having a mind to live. You got to live right because you want to live right. It's got to be in you to live right. If it's not, you're not going to live right. I'm thanking God for just being delivered. I'm thanking God for being saved in such a time as this. I want to thank God again for all of our viewers tonight. I hope you have something to write with because if the Lord say the same, I'm going to start a series. I don't know how long this series is going to go, but I'm going to touch on different subjects, the things that are going on in the church and around the church. And the theme, uh, the subject of this series is going to be rightly dividing the word. Rightly dividing the word. And we're going to go to the book of 2 Timothy 2 and 14. And I'm going to just go down through this. And I want uh, tonight I'm going to introduce some of the things that I'm, uh, subjects I'm planning on working on. And you may write this down and it's going to help you out. I'm not going to go into it all tonight, but no, it's just going to be a series. Is that all right? The f see, and number one, we got to know who we're serving. Uh -huh. So uh, my first, uh, not tonight, but the first on the next coming uh, Wednesday night, the Lord say the same. My subject is going to be the Godhead. Amen. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. You'll find that Ephesians 4 and 5, I'm going to let you do your own research. The Godhead. There's a lot of discussion about the Godhead. There's a lot of talk about the Godhead. There's a lot of belief. There's a lot of doctrines. But we're going to rightly divide the word of truth. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. Another one is going to be the doctrine of baptism. We'll find that in Hebrews 6, 1 through 2. And if, I want y'all to notice something. See, that's when you have to rightly divide the word of truth. Somebody said, well, man wrote this. No, man wrote this as he was inspired by God. Can the church say amen? amen. So let's remember this now. Let's remember this. The doctrine of, I didn't say baptism. If you notice in, in Hebrews 6, the Apostle Paul speaks of the doctrine of baptisms mm -hmm. with an S. Yeah. So there is more, if it's a baptism, it's got to be more than one baptism. Mm -hmm. There are some say it's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Well, John said, I indeed baptized with water. Didn't he say it? But he says, one coming after me, he's going to baptize you what? With the Holy Ghost and that with fire. That's another baptism. Amen. On the day of Pentecost, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. But the scripture said in other places, they were baptized. So Paul knew all of this was going to come up. So he put it in Hebrews 6 concerning the doctrine of baptisms. Woo. The third one I'm going to work on is going to be Christian attire. Uh-huh. Christian attire. What the Lord says, and some, some is going to be in 1 Peter 1 and 3, but it's going to be a lot more. We're going to let you do a little research. We're going to dig in this. In other words, they, uh, when, and I believe it's what Proverbs 7, they said, the, when the young man was out in the street, there met him a woman with the attire of a harlot. Uh -huh. So that means there was a, an attire that the harlots wore. That's right. Uh-huh. So the harlots had an attire. I can't say too much. I'm going to let y'all do some studying. There was a man in the, in the Bible. He found this woman in the street, and she changed her clothes. 
and he ended up having a baby by her. But she had on the attire of a harlot. So if, if there's a dress that goes with harlots, then saints shouldn't wear that dress. Notice I'm, I'm not talking about just dress like a dress. I'm when I say if there's an attire, let me just bring it this way. If there's an attire that goes with harlots, then saints shouldn't wear that attire because if you wear the attire of a harlot, it's going to identify you as. Okay. I'm just, I'm just, we're going to talk. We're going to work on it. And so you have to rightly divide the word of truth. Now, I'm going to say something. Don't y'all get rattled. Now, at UHDT, we do wear jewelry. But we wear it. How can I say it? We, we wear it in a manner where we don't overindulge in it. Somebody said, well, we don't wear Well, a ring is jewelry. A watch is jewelry. But we don't go to the extreme. Because you all know what people will do. If you allow people to do, what will they do? Go to the extreme. Y'all know I'm telling you the truth. So we're going to talk about saved britches and unsaved britches for women. Uh, I'm going to mess up now. They got some saved britches and they got some unsaved. See, we got churches that are changing their doctrines to appease the people. Because saints don't want to look peculiar. They don't want to be talked about anymore. But I'm going to give you all this before I go any further. And I'm, I'm taking my notes down. The Lord told me this. You know what the problem with the saints are? You all know what? If we are not careful, every one of us in this building, our mindset is on one thing. Things are going to get better. And it's not. This world is on its way out. Jesus is on his way back. And the world is painting the picture. They're building over there on 35. They were talking about today on the news. This park, they're going to build right there by Beckley. And they're going to have a, a tram. And all this going to go all the way down to the zoo. And how they're going to bring people in. And one of the city councilmen, which was Hispanic, he was saying that he hoped that when they did this, that it doesn't price the people that live in that area out of that area. But what are they talking about? Everywhere you look, they're building condos and so. Now, I, I'm, I'm going to throw this in there. I've been preaching a lot of stuff, and sometimes people don't believe what Apostle Rogers say. They say, well, he's a little deep. When I was on the radio, one time uh, somebody called me and asked to say any black cars on the parking lot. One of my listeners called, and she said, Apostle, do you need me to come down? And I said, no, sister, I'm fine. I didn't even know the lady because I was doing some touchy stuff. But have y'all noticed something? Our economy is so bad. Gasoline in California is over $6 a gallon for regular. But why are we building so many warehouses? Some of y'all better wake up. They're building warehouses in your neighborhood. More than one. Is our economy that good that we got to have that many warehouses? If it was that good, maybe the, 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 ch the cereal boxes would be full. I opened a package of Ritz crackers the other day, and the Ritz crackers are smaller, and the, and the pack is shorter. So what they did on the side, they folded it. That was the old, old wrapper. They had to fold it on the side, then they folded it a little bit, a couple of two or three times at the top. So the crackers that they're making now go with it so they don't have to make a bunch of new wrappers. Ain't nobody sending on the news about the consumer being ripped off. And I'm saying this, I'm throwing some stuff in tonight because I'm laying some groundwork. And I'm saying to all the senior citizens, they call me senior because I'm 68. They had a man on the news just yesterday evening how his wife was seduced by investors. They came to his house. His house was not even on the market to be sold. A 300 and I think 80 some thousand dollar home, nice home. And they had his wife and I think she has Alzheimer's. And she signed the contract. And after she signed the contract, she just like my little grandbaby, she just went to playing with it, just drawing all over it in the same motion. So they finally said, well, we, can, we have to tear this contract up. We can't use it because she did all this 
but she had Alzheimer's. And when the husband found out about it, then they backed off the contract. But in the next few days, two more investors called to buy their house with the same deal. And the news company, the news, uh, it's, they called one investor and he said that he was basically, uh, he found it on the website. He was lying because she didn't have it on the website. The house wasn't for sale. Right, right. Then there was another one said that, well, he actually contacted the lady, approached her and talked to her about selling her house when her house was not for sale. And the news anchor for Channel 11 was sitting there and he said, I got my phone, I'm waiting on them to call me now while he was on the news. Because everybody's getting phone calls, do you want to sell your house? Somebody sent me a card the other day and had all this print, what they want to do, they could make me a deal, didn't have to clean the house, they make it so no closing and all that. And then they told me to look at the other side and they had a picture of their family. Like that's supposed to persuade me, really? That was one little cartoon they had when every time they ain't got, in a, got in, a, in, a, in a little pickle, they put that real s solemn smile on, teary-eyed, eyes get big, and then jump on them. But what I'm saying is, this is the time that we're living. And my subject is, again, rightly dividing the word. That's going to be the series that I'm going to be teaching from. Yeah, we're going to talk about wearing... Uh, in excess, jewelry. Yeah. But you can't say we don't wear jewelry. Like I said again, we wear all kinds, but we don't wear jewelry in excess. Is that all right? We're going to talk about marriage. Yeah. We're going to talk about marriage in the sense of divorcing. See, there are some, some that teach that if a person gets married, you can't get married again except your spouse die. That's not scripture. We're going to write it divided. Y'all with me? The apostle Paul said what? He said, if the, if, I'm just going to make it for a quick example. If you and your wife was drinking blood martinis and you got saved and the wife didn't get saved, if the wife is willing to live with you, what did Paul tell the man? Don't put her away. But he said, but if the unbelieving depart, let him let her depart. A brother and sister is not under bondage in such cases. Under bondage to what? The marriage vow. He said he's free to marry. What did he say? But only in the Lord. You can't go out there and marry a son and then save him. I ain't getting no help right now. He said only in the Lord. Somebody said, well, I'm going to marry him and I'm going I'm, I'm to marry him and then my saved life is going to Calls him. No. When, when you understand what Paul is saying, he said, when the, if that unbelieving be willing to stay with you, there's a possibility that your saved life can persuade that person to get saved and vice versa. But not, that's not a law. There's a possibility of. But if the unbelieving depart, say, let them depart. You don't have to sit around. That person, listen, let me, let me tell y'all something. You've been faithful to somebody. They in the church and they leave the church. They don't want to be saved anymore. You've been clean. Your life is clean. You haven't had any uh, extracurricular activity. You haven't cut out on your spouse. You've been faithful. And that person leave and leave the church and then go out there and get married and start another family. And then you got to sit up in the church for the rest of your life and raise his babies. And you can't never get married again. Ah! I felt the devil. That's not scripture. Rightly, but only marry in the Lord. Amen. We're going to talk about marriage. How saved people only marry saved people. Because if you marry, if you're not saved, if you marry, if you're saved and you marry somebody that's not saved, then the devil is your father-in-law. So, and the Lord told us, I would that you would put difference between unholy and holy, clean and unclean. So the sanctified folk, God's people have always been a different people. 
But do you all not know it's a lot of church folk? They're getting tired. That's it. That's the word, preacher. They're getting tired. They get, they, they, what I'm saying here, remember what I'm saying. This thing is not going to get better. It's going to only get worse. I had a news clip come up on my phone this evening. 365,000 cows, milk cows, was destroyed because they were contaminated by a military base. Milk cows. So if they destroyed 3,665 milk cows, that means 3,365 milk cows can't give a gallon of milk. Hello? If you got 3,665 milk cows, that means if that cow, that's 3,665 gallons of milk. And if that cow give two gallons, each cow, now look how much milk now is not on the market. Look how much butter and how much cheese is not. So what are they doing? They're creating scenarios. These cows have been moving beside the military base for how long? Now all of a sudden they're contaminated. They were making baby formula for all these years and then somebody go in there and say, well, they didn't do it right. And then they, they put a squeeze on it. Now we are importing baby formula from other countries. But who's over there inspecting their factories to say that they're making it right? The FDA is not over there looking at their countries. We're not inspecting their plants. But we're bringing it to America and we're giving it to our mothers. You know, sometimes sometime you got to be more than a scripture person. You got to know about the time that you live. This, this thing is a game. This thing is being set up. And I'm not going to get in this case tonight, but I'm talking about some. I'm going to talk about some. Ain't no way. Donald Trump was a black man. He'd been in prison a long time ago. He'd been so far back in prison, they'd be shooting beans to him with a slingshot. He'd be just like Manuel Noriega. Every time parole come up, denied, loose lips, sink ships. But if that was a black man, he would have been in prison. That boy up there in, in uh, Boston, Buffalo, if that had been a black man that, was sh that shot all those people down there in Uvalde's, if that had been a black man that was doing all that shooting, Boy, he, 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 he would have died. They'd have went in the building a long time ago. But see, now they're coming under scrutiny as to how long they waited a whole hour. What happened to the T.J. Hookers and, and all them kind of folk? Dirty Harry, folks that just go on in there and just shoot up folks and get it over with. We got all these folk with all this training, but they scared. When they got the upper hand, they feel good. But when the upper hand ain't for them, they all of a sudden they get butterflies. I'm just saying. We got to do this. We got to wait. We got to wait for backup. We got to wait for backup. We got to wait for the SWAT team. But when you one-on-one -on -one with them and you act a fool, bam, they just shoot. Oh, I was intending to get my taser. I'm just saying. I'm just, I'm just saying. We're going to work on a lot of things. A lot of things. And I'll say it again. My first one is going to be the Godhead. Because there's a lot of folk got the scripture wrong about the Godhead. See, Jesus wasn't Jesus until he was born. Hello. Because when he was born, his name was conceived by the angels. So prior to him being born, he was the word. Can anybody hear me? Amen. After he came and how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, then he became the Christ. He became the anointed one. Yes. But prior to that, he was the word. And in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God, and the same was in the beginning with God. And by him, all things was made. And without him, there was nothing made. Yeah. Am I right? And John went on to say, and the word was made flesh, and we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Yes. God the Father didn't come down to the earth. Right. That's right. God didn't die. No. Right. Right. If he died, heaven was empty. Right. The son died. Right. Yes. 
and the Son. And see, people want to get hung up about the Father and the Son. But what you going to do with the Holy Ghost? Because you can say a word against the Father and a word against the Son, but if you speak a word against the Holy Ghost, there remains no forgiveness in this life, neither in the world to come. And Jesus said, if I go not away, the Comforter cannot come. So the Comforter is waiting on me to come where he is so he can come here because he's going to take over. Because, see, I can only be in one place at one time, but the Comforter is going to be not in a body but a spirit, and he's going to get on getting you. And on the day of Pentecost, when the fullness of time came, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, when you see it with a capital S, it's talking about the Holy Ghost got in us. And except the grain of wheat fall into the ground, into the ground and die, it abided alone. So when Jesus went into the ground and died, then all of us come up. And if the Spirit of him that raised up Christ from the dead, that means Jesus didn't raise himself up. The Spirit of him that raised up Christ from the dead, if it dwells in you. We don't have Christ in us. We have the Holy Ghost in us. Ah, help me out, Lord. Hey, hey. Rightly divide. And they said, there's one Lord. And David said, what? And my Lord said unto his Lord, set down my right hand till I make thy enemy thy footstool. Sound like there's more than one. In the creation, he said, what? Let us make man. And how can us be singular? Remember, Jesus wasn't born then. But it's a sad thing when preachers can't rightly divide the word of truth. And in the book of Daniel, the third chapter, when Nebuchadnezzar looked into the furnace, and he asked uh, all those astrologers and everything, he said, how many did we put in there? They said, three, O king. He said, I see four. And you know what? And the fourth one looked like, they ain't getting no help right now. God is able, rightly divide. And the fourth one looked like, the son of God, not God, but the son of God. Because see, no man look up on God and live. But you can look up on the son. Never you need a pagan king got more sense than a lot of preachers in the pulpit. And people have the, uh, now devout a doctrine. One Lord. I agree, there ain't but one faith. But how are you going to have more, how are you going to, Paul said the doctrine of baptisms. Now John said, I baptize with water, that's one. He said, but the one coming after me, he's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. That's another baptism. And then they try to tell the lie about the apostle Paul baptizing. And if you go to 1 Corinthians, uh, what, 1 and 15, Paul said, I thank God. He said, of, of the household of Stephanus, I don't know if I baptize any. He said, God didn't send me to baptize. Hey God. He sent me to preach the gospel. And folk got hung up. And then Peter came back and broke it down and said, uh, the like figure, whereunto water do it now, save us. He made it look like water saves us. But then he broke it down so you would understand. He said, not the putting away the filth of the flesh. But it's the answer of a good conscience toward God. All water baptism is the answer of a good conscience toward God because we can't go out and dig a hole and bury you, so we take you to the water and bring you up. And you rise in the newness of life. Let me tell you something. You go down in water and get baptized and don't get filled with the Holy Ghost. In hell, you'll lift up your eyes. See, don't nobody and don't nothing know its way back to glory but the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. I'm feeling it, boy. I'm just giving y'all a little. You know, my mother used to cook cakes and she would cook them little sample cake. We wait around for the sample cake. It wasn't the real cake, it was the samples. See, I mean, y'all should have been born back in the country. I mean, that little sample cake, boy, sometimes, and sometimes she'd cook it a little bigger and she'd cut it in four square, boy. Let me tell you, my brother, man, would slap some butter on it while it's hot. Ah! Yeah. It'd make your mouth drool just thinking about it. Thank you, Lord. So, I want us to understand something. I'm going to work on some stuff. Because, see, there are, there are saved folk. Now, this is one thing you got to be careful about in your saveness. You, sister, you may not wear pants, but you may have the attitude, well, I really don't see anything wrong with it. You might as well put you some on. Because you don't want to be partakers of another man's sin. Or you don't want to glorify glory in those that are doing wrong. I don't care if it's your daughter, your grandmama, or whoever. 
Even back in the wild, wild west, you know what? Over in England, women, when they rode horse, they rode side saddle. And the women that rode them, and, and, and don't let them be at the can-cans. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Well, y'all act like I ain't never seen it. Y'all know at the can-can when they pull their dresses up and they be tired, tired, and they kick their leg. And boy, they see that much of their men, they be hollering like wool. Oh, they just hollering, having a fit. And all they saw was, was the, the, the calf. And when they had the bridle, you didn't have to look hard to know who the, who the women's were. Even back in the days of old. And you got to understand something in the time when scripture, remember scripture is written in absolute. But we are not living in absolute. Because if we go absolute the scripture, every one of you sisters should be at home right now, not working. Your husband supposed to be bringing in the bread. You supposed to be taking care of the babies and taking care of the house, cooking his dinner, going out shopping and getting everything prepared. And he's supposed to come home. Baby, and everything is right. My brother said, oh, Pastor, I need some help. <laughs> See, we don't live in a perfect society. So we have to rightly divide the word. And then you have to take the scripture in the text in the age in which it was written. But let me tell you something. Under the Old Testament, Jesus did away with the ceremonial laws. But the other things in the law, he intensified or he modified. See, under the law, you have to be caught in the act of adultery. Under grace, all you got to do is look with the intent. You are already stripped the naked. You already with her, already in the bed with her, in your mind. You've already committed her. Now, if the devil brings this to you and you rebuke it, that's a different story. But if you're just living up loving it, hoping I dream this same dream again tonight. The Lord already charged you with that one. Hello. You can kill a person with your tongue. Murder. That's the difference in grace and under the law. See, under the law, under the law was regular flour. You had to add baking powder to make it rise. Under grace, it's self-rising flour. All you got to do is put the water to it and stick it in the oven. You know what? You don't have to stand there looking in the oven door and say, come on, bread, rise. Come on, bread. Rise, bread. Now, if you put the right stuff in, you know what that bread going to do? You put too much, it'll, it'll come out of the pan. Yeah. Back in the day, they had clabber girl. I know some of your sisters don't know what I'm talking about. That's called baking powder. Some of y'all don't know nothing but Jif. Thank God for Jif. Yeah. Yeah. Back in the day, mama and them didn't even have to, they didn't use no measure. They just took their fingers and they got so much of this and so much of that and so much of this and they stirred it up and, and the cornbread, boy, let me tell you, it tastes like cake. I ain't getting no help right now. They didn't, they didn't have no pills. But that pills baby went out of business back in the day. You know what? They made their own biscuit. They, they rolled them in them balls and pulled that piece off and, and then patted it and then, fit it, and then hit them with their knuckles and got some grease and a spoon and put a little grease on them and watched some cat head ride. Ooh, boy, you get one of them with some butter in it. Some brother rabbit served. It was, it was on then. Wasn't no Vermont made in log cabin. No, Sogum. And, and, and some of them didn't even have no name. It was just in a can. Got it down there at Mr. Jack's house where they made it at the grist mill. They down there making syrup, but they making shine too. I ain't getting no help right now. And when they go down there, I want, I want four cans. They know four and one. They know what that means. Three syrup and one. Hey, good <laughs> and the man stop you, he don't know because none of them got labels on them. He ain't gonna mess your syrup up. So y'all gonna go. Have to turn you loose. I'm just saying. Now watch what the scripture said. I said a lot. But I'm gonna break this thing down because see, this is what you gotta do. It's one faith, but there's more than one baptism. How can you say it's one Lord? How can you say it's one Lord? And people want to say that, they, that Jesus sat down on the right hand of God. The Bible says he sat down on the right hand of the throne of God. That's a place of position. You can't sit down on your right hand by yourself. 
Jesus said, he that sent me is with me. You don't send yourself. You just, well, I'm going to send myself to the bathroom. Really? Why don't you just get up and go? Let's see what the Apostle Paul said. Boy, this, you're talking about good. Remember, number one, the Godhead, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, Ephesians 4 and 5. The doctrine of baptism, we're gonna, I'm giving you a starter point. I'm not telling you, you're going to do some research on your own. Hebrews 6, 1 through 2. And then we're going to talk about Christian attire. 1 Peter 1 and 13 is one, but we're going to have a whole lot. Then we're going to talk about marriage and adultery. See, everything that looks like adultery is not adultery. And some of that that is adultery don't look like adultery. That's really what the Lord said. Whoremongers and adulterers, God's going to judge. Because it's, so t it's like a race. When they're coming in neck and neck, it's so close, they got to do a photo finish. Adultery and not being an adultery is so close. God said, you know what? Paul said, you know what? The Lord said, he's going to judge that. I'm going to leave that alone. That's not mine. I'm just going to preach holiness. And what did he do? And then he told us in Hebrews 6, he said, let's go on to perfection. Let's stop worrying about all this stuff. But you know what? People put more emphasis on baptism and stuff like that than they do on living right. That's right. That's it. That's it. You're crying all this about me. And then sometimes people wait till you get saved and get filled. They want to know, how did, you, uh, how did you get baptized? And you're full of the Holy Ghost. Well, Stephen, when he baptized a unit, he didn't use nobody's name. He just got zapped. He got energized and got taken over somewhere else and he finished his ministry. He just got transported. He left the unit going away happy. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Well, one thing about the Holy Ghost, everybody can get the Holy Ghost. Amen. Ooh, it's for you. It's for your children's children. It's for them which are far off. It's for as many as the Lord thy God shall call. If somebody wants it, you can get it. Let's go to Timothy just for a moment here. First, Second Timothy 2.14. Second, this is a KJV. If you've got something else, it's going to read a little different, all right? Second Timothy 2.14, he said, these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord. Y'all know how that Lord is spelled? It's got a, a small R in it. Y'all see that? Sometimes it's spelled with a capital R. I just want to bring that to your attention. That they strive not above words to no profit, but to, to the subverting of the hearers. He said, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needed, notice this, that needed continually, needed not be ashamed, rightly, rightly. See, if you want to rightly divide the word of truth, the only way you can rightly divide the word of truth, you got to study. And I'm going to tell you something. You don't get this just studying. Because there are certain things that are spiritually discerned. You just can't look at the letter and get the interpretation just looking at the letter. There's a spiritual discernment in it. And see, that's why back in the days of old, they had schools of prophets. Because the older prophets taught the younger prophets. Y'all don't know that? Amen. Elijah had a school of prophets, didn't he? And the Bible said one day one was felling a log. And see, they didn't have true value hardware. Hello. Old boy was cutting a log. And they said, you know what they said? They said, Master, it's too straight. Some people take the text and say, well, what he was saying was, the teaching here is too tight. What he was saying was, the building we got is too small. Let's build another house. So they went out, and, they, and while one was filling a beam, the axe head came off the handle and fell in the water. And the young prophet ran to the man of God and said, alas, master, say it was borrowed. It wasn't mine. It was Jeff Rose, and it's gone. And the man of God asked him, said, where did it fall? And he told him right there. You know what the man of God did? He picked up a stick and threw it in the water. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. And the Bible said, and the axe head didn't float, but the axe head swam. That means the axe head had propulsion. And I don't believe that preacher had to dive off in the water and get it. I believe it just came right up to the bank. And all he had to do was just walk down there and pick it up. Now, a solid piece of metal, they have propulsion. It's, it's got to have a hollowness about it. But with God, 
all things. Whew. And the Bible said, and the axe head. Read your Bible. The Bible said the axe head. Swim. Y'all know what swimming is, don't you? So it didn't have any arm, but that means it had, it had purport, it means it had some power. And it just came on across the water. <laughs> like a torpedo. <laughs> Ain't God good? Yeah. Them same young prophets, man. They, they went out. And see, this is what I'm talking about. Study to show yourself approved. See, sometimes, let me tell y'all what the, what the Lord gave me. I, 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 told, I shared it with Brother Victor back in the back. And I, I wrote it down. You can be rightly wrong. Yeah. You can be rightly wrong. I'll let you figure that one out. Me and them young prophets, the man of God told them, say, what? Go out and get, they're going to go and get some gourds and make some soup, some pottage. But then, see, out there where the gourds were, there's also a wild gourd. But it looks just like the, the one that, you know, we, we eat. For some of you folk that don't know, in, in the country, in the watermelon patch, there's a watermelon, but then there's some called a sitting. And so you can crawl up on one of them watermelons when it's hot, hit it with your fist, knock a hole in it, and get that hard, just rub it all over your face and cool yourself up. You don't want to hit when I'm sitting like that. You hit it with your hand, you're going to break it. Hard as concrete. Look just like a watermelon, stripe it and everything. But when you don't know, you don't know. And you be out there picking peas and, oh, look at all these pretty flowers and everything, and go, and go over there and touch a bull nail. Ow! And then it stick you. You got trouble in your way now. Out there in the field. I'm going to leave that alone. Because folk knew anything about bull nails, ain't but one instant here. Yeah. I'm moving on. But I'm just saying, see, when you don't know, you don't know. So these old boys went out there and they, 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 got, they got some gourds, but they got the wild gourd. Man, they were cutting them up, putting them in the pot, made a pot. Ooh. They say, ah, come and get it. It's ready. It's ready. But when they taste it, it was, ah, ah, it's death in the pot. It's death in the pot because it was poisonous. And what did the man of God say? Get me some meal. And he poured meal in the pot and said, he said, now come and eat. Uh, Jesus said, I'm the bread of life. Uh, <laughs> Put some meal in there and took the poison out of it. I'm the bread of life. Let me tell you something. Jesus can take the poison out of your life if you let him come in. I better move on. Then he said, rightly dividing the word of truth. He said, but shun profane and vain babbling. A lot of unnecessary talk. Stuff that don't have no sense, no value. You don't need, and then this is one thing we got to be real careful about as ministers and saints of God. We don't want to be show-offs. You don't want to try to show people how much you know. Just be quiet. Your gift will make room for you. And then, and then when people bring up profane stuff and, and, and vain babbling, well, sometimes it's good just keep your mouth shut. Don't even get in conversation. People, sometimes people say, I've gone to the barbershop. And I walk in, they say, what you think about that, Apostle Rogers? I just, that ain't mine. I'll leave it alone. Let y'all talk. Every now and then, God give me something to say, I'll say. But if you don't get it, i just be quiet. And we'll get into a conversation with a bunch of fools who don't want to get saved. Y'all know how barbershops are. They're like beauty shops. They just, yeah, 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 all the time. Just talking, jumping from one subject to the other. Watch what he said. But he said, for they will increase unto more what? Ungodliness. Because when you get into it with somebody on some stuff like that, and then they say the wrong thing, then they say, then you ain't no take it. Then you want to fire back and all that. It's just, it's just more. Forget it. He said, and the words will eat as doeth a canker, of whom Hymenius and Philetus, these were two men, they, Paul had to turn them over to the devil. Two young preachers, y'all better hear what I'm saying, who concerning the truth have errors, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrew, they overthrew, they overthrew the faith of some. Some people's faith was overthrown. They had enough persuasion, and they were wrong. And they persuaded people. That's just like the Pharisees and the Sadducees. The, the Sadducees, they don't believe in angels. They don't believe in the resurrection. But you got them Pharisees, they got all this other stuff. And then the Pharisees, you know what, what did the Bible call them? He said they're just like white sepulchers. 
They're beautiful on the outside, but inwards, they're full of, full of dead men, rotten and full of dead men bones. People, listen to what I'm saying. Notice what this is. He said, well, watch this. He said, who concerning the truth have erred? Then he goes to verse 19. Nevertheless, in spite of these people, I want y'all to listen to something that jumped out in this scripture to me this evening. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standed. Y'all see that TH on the end of it? The foundation of God will forever stand. The foundation of God will never be weak. The foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. That means there are some that's not his. The Apostle Paul said in the book of, to the Ephesians, for this cause come a destruction upon the children of disobedience. Just some people say, well, well, we're all God's children. Oh, baby, you got it wrong. We're all God's creation. How many hear what I'm saying? And you got to remember, Paul gave a warning to the Gentile in Romans 11 and 13. You can read it down for yourself. How that the Jews being connected to the true vine. And because of unbelief, they were disconnected from the true vine. And the Gentile who were a wild vine, contrary by nature, was grafted in. And he warned them, don't you boast. Don't you boast. Just like the Gentile, the Jews were cut off because of unbelief. And the Gentile was given an opportunity to believe. How many hear what I'm saying? He let the Gentiles know because when the Jews turned from unbelief to belief, then God was going to bring them back. And the Gentile, because of unbelief, you're going to be plucked off. The age of the Gentile is running up. I was watching CNN news the other night, and Don Lemon was questioning this man. He was a Caucasian man, and he looked like a preacher almost. I don't remember who he was. I just heard part of it. And he was asking him, they were talking about the killing and all this other stuff. When was it all going to come to an end? When was it going to get better? And you know what the guy told him? I can't remember the exact word, but he said, it's not going to get better until the full miss, the summation of time and the return of Christ. That's it. Don Lemon didn't want to talk about that. All this, y'all all talking about, let me tell y'all something. What did we do in our schools? We said, when I say we, ancestors on down the line, going all the way back to the Jews when Jesus was getting ready to be crucified. And there was always a tradition where one was released. And the Jews had a choice between Barabbas and Jesus. They said, crucify Christ, but give us Barabbas. They asked for a murderer. They asked for a thief. They asked for a mobster. And what did they do? And the, and the Jews said, let his blood be upon us and our children's children. And during the Holocaust, they died by the millions. And they're still dying. But see, it doesn't now, it now because the Lord have brought all things together unto himself. Now the Gentiles are suffering. We took, we let Madeline Mary O'Hare take prayer out of our schools. We stopped praying. We said, give us Barabbas. So what do we have now? Now we have drag queens teaching our kids. Amen. LGBT. Do y'all not know under President Obama, he appointed a czar to the LGBTQ Teachers Association. Why did he do it? He got some sugar in his tank. Moving on. Anyway, we got to remember something. This thing is ugly. And it's not going to get any better. Hear what I'm saying, people. This thing is ugly. They said, let his blood be upon us. This deal, we had Sandy Hooks. Now we have, we had the one in El Paso, the killing there. The one in Buffalo, the killing there, a mass shooting. We were at a graduation last night, and my grandbaby was saying, she said, Papa, she said, I, I don't like being in places like this. She said, it's, it's just, 
I don't feel comfortable. And she was just looking and turning and, and all that. And she was holding on to my arm. And I, I told her, I said, well, I got the HG. She said, you're right, Bobby. You got the HG. And she said, you know, and I said, goodness and mercy going to follow me all the days of my life. The angels of the Lord encamped about me. And, she, and then she brought up my message. She said, we can make it on boards and broken pieces. I said, you, I said, you, tell, you tell me these kids ain't listening? Because after that graduation was over and people were just everywhere hollering all upon the, the seats and everything. And she was just holding on to my arm. She said, I'm going to stay with you, Bob. I said, yeah, yeah, you, you can ride on my victory. See, you have to understand something. People of God. Do you all not know we have been pushed into an era where preachers have preached this thing to make people feel like you, you, we're on a hiatus. We're on a cruise to, to Jamaica, to the Bahamas. Do you all not know we should have the mindset of Rambo? We are behind the enemy line. And we're trying to get as many MIAs out as we possibly can because we've got to get to that pickup point with the helicopter because the helicopter is not going to wait. But we get caught up. Ain't nothing wrong with having an hour. Ain't nothing wrong with having this. But we got to keep on our armor. We got to keep our holiness together. We got to keep sanctification pure so people can see the unadulteredness of God. He, he said, well, and the Lord knoweth them that are hid. And let everyone that name the name of Christ do what? Depart from iniquity. Come out of all that secret junk. I'm repentant of sin. The reason people are having a hard time, they're sweeping stuff under the rug. Boy, I'm going to say something right quick. This is what the Lord gave me, boy. It's coming back. Ooh, thank God for the fax machine. I was getting ready and the Lord gave me this this evening. He said, being saved is like a float. Someone call them barbers when you're fishing. Anybody know anything about fishing, you know what I'm talking about. When you cast it out in the water and when there's a, a breeze blowing, you know what the waves do? The waves carry your float that barber the way the current is going. But you know what you have to do sometimes? You got more than one line. You know what you have to do? You have to go over there. Uh, you're getting out. You're getting away. You're getting too far out. You're getting, you have to reel it back in and then reset it. What you talking about, Pastor? Let me tell you something. In our saveness, there's the perimeter of holiness. But our saveness is like a barber or a float or a caulk. And the life itself has a tendency of taking it out of the realm of the perimeter of holiness. So what do we have to do? Get our spiritual rod and reel and reel it back in. Because see, sometimes anybody know anything about fishing, so you can have more than one pole and somebody else fishing with you. Your stuff can get all, and man, then, then they get a bite and everybody all tangled up and, you're, and they think they got a bite and you out there snapping, you got that line. They got yours. So what do you do? You have to stay sharp. You don't just go out there. I got a feeling, everything. All looking all up in the trees. No, you got you to keep your... You got to stay focused. You're fishing. You got to stay focused. Do you not know in this sameness, you can't just get caught up in feelings and stuff and all kinds of stuff. You can't get caught up in the emotions of the stuff that's happening in your life. And you forget about where your cork is. Yeah. You can drift off to the perimeter. Yeah. You got to be smart enough to know when you're back on your territory. Yeah. Then sit it back in the stand. You got more than one. You're constantly checking them. Move. Same thing about being saved. Y'all might not believe this. When you, sister girl, before you got saved, some sisters, they knew pants was the right for them. Ain't getting no help. You already knew you had a shape, you had a figure. Ain't getting no help. You had handles. Ain't talking about no bicycle handles. And you put your pants on and, and, you, and, and, and don't put them heels on and make your legs come up like a stag and tighten the muscles up. I ain't getting no hair. Okay, okay. Now, when the Lord delivered you, he delivered you from that because you didn't mind working it. 
Thank you, a little help right now. But I, I, I'm going to just tell you what the scriptures say. The scriptures say they, they mince with their heels. Y'all know what mincing is? Mincing means, that means when you got those spike heels on them, high one. When you hit them, they, you know, they, that heel is small, but they elevate it. Y'all, I'm talking about when, they, when the foot look like it's like that. And, and see, when they, when, they, when they walk, they hit that little small heel, and, and it's sort of making, when, they, when that spike hit, it's sort of working. And then they, and then they sort of work it, and, and then they sort of, when they walk in, they sort of, you know, working it. And some folk had more to work than others. So when you get saved, the Lord delivered you from the working. I ought to get a half amen somewhere in the church. Maybe I'm talking to the wrong folk tonight. So. When you get saved, you save and deliver now. You don't want to go back to that. Because if you ain't careful, you get saved and you're in the church. And you're going up to the offering table, working it. On the usher board, working it. I ain't getting no help. Uh, you know, that's it. Ooh, pastor. It brings back too many memories. It, 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 puts you, it puts you on the perimeter. You need to, you need to reel the caulk in. That's it. That's it. That's good. I told y'all a long time ago, if Apostle Roger let people do anything they want to do, this church house will be packed. We have a big church right now built. But the devil is alive. We're going to talk. We gonna, boy, this series, we're going to talk about some stuff. About sinners. Sinners places in the church. The only place in the church for a sinner is to get saved. And do you not know a pastor destroys sinners when they use a sinner that's not saved? I won't say when I say that's not saved. I didn't say he wasn't filled with the Holy Ghost. But he's saved. He hasn't got filled yet. But if when they're not saved and you're using people like that, you know what you do? You create an atmosphere. Uh-huh. And you got to be careful with people that are saved that's not filled. Because after a while, they get to the point of feeling, I don't have to get filled. Yeah. I'll never forget Apostle Murray's testimony. When he got saved, he said when he was a young man, they, uh, he came to the altar after he came back from the military. He came to the altar. He didn't get filled. And they made him a deacon and all of this. But he wasn't filled. And finally, after the Lord filled him with the Holy Ghost, you no, know, he felt bad. He said he felt bad because I'm not filled with the Holy Ghost, but I'm doing everything all these other people do, but I'm not filled. Let me tell you something. I don't care how saved you are. You can't live saved without the Holy Ghost. You can't live a perfected life. Let me say it like that. Without the Holy Ghost, you're going to stumble and clip somewhere. If that be the case, you don't need the Holy Ghost. Let me move on. Let me move on. Watch this here. Let me, let me see. Every man that named the name of Christ depart. He said, but in every great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver. Notice he notices. He said, but also gold and silver is all right. Y'all hear me? But also of wood and of earth and of some to honor and some to dishonor. If any man purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel of honor, sanctified, meat, good, meat for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. But flee also you for lust, but follow after righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they gender strife. You got to know when to cut it off. You got to know when to let it go. Can anybody hear what I'm saying? And I'm going to skip down to verse 26. Well, verse 25, it's in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. Y'all see that? People sometimes don't know they are opposing themselves. The things that you are believing and the things that you're saying is working against the holiness of God. And then he said, he said, in meekness, you, got, you just can't go dogmatic after be instructing those that oppose themselves. If God preeventual would give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. If he'd say to the acknowledging of the, to the acceptance of the truth, meaning what they were doing was rightly wrong. And that they may recover them. Notice what he say. And that they may recover, recover, get back themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him. Y'all know who that him is? The devil. At his will, 
the person. The devil don't have the right just to come in. He don't just come in and just take you. We don't live in no Steven Spielberg's world where the devil just come and just suck you into the abyss. When people do this, they do it because they refuse to recover themselves. And the devil is just like the bone collector. When you refuse to recover yourself, you know what he do? He'll gladly tell you, get on board. Come on, get on, sit down. People of God, you're talking about a time. Our next class is going to be the God here. The Lord say the same. I told you, do some study. Somebody said, well, Pastor, you didn't preach no salvation. Like, yes, I did. Ooh, ooh. Boy, this is deliverance right here. This is going to help a whole lot of folk. And do you not know, when you make up in your mind, you want to be right. When we make up, when we get it, and, and you know, sometimes the devil says, well, Pastor Rogers don't want you to have nothing. I'm not telling you not to have nothing. I'm not, the Lord, you know what the Lord said? I was telling Sister Rogers this the other day. The Lord said this. He said, beloved, I wish above all things, above everything, that thou mayest prosper, be in hell. Notice what he said. Even as thy soul prosper. When your soul is prospering, the Lord wants your soul to prosper. He wants all of them to go up together. He wants you to prosper. He wants you to be in hell. But, but see, some of us, we have to get to the point of realizing there's some things God's just not going to give you in this life. Because that's not your purpose. He didn't send you for that. He sent you to seek and to save that which is lost. I'm telling you, saints, I'm thanking God for the saints of God. You know, I, I, I watched the military picture last night, and they were talking about the ten most deadly weapons and the ones that brought fear into the hearts of the enemy. I get, I get comfort out of hearing certain things because it does me good. And man classified these things in categories depending on the versatility and uh, how much firepower and how much threat and then how much fear they brought. I believe the, after they named, they named uh, this submarine, this nuclear submarine, said it had more nuclear weapons on it than all they had in World War II. And there's so many of them, they are out in the sea. And they're talking about how that they have all these uh, ballistic missiles and all these nuclear warheads and stuff. But the last one they named, I believe it was a, a C-130 transport plane that had been converted. And they made a gunship out of it. And it had two cannons on it. And boy, let me tell you, that old boy said, man, he said, when this thing come, he said, you don't want to be on the other end. You know, wouldn't it be something if we get ourselves to the point when the devil can say, Paul, I know. And Jesus, I know. But he don't say, oh, yeah, I know you too. <laughs> but, but, he can't, he, but he can't look at you and say, but who are you? Y'all yeah. see what I'm saying? See, we, this world is not our home. Amen. And we have to make up in our mind. And, and, and see, if I build back the things that I once destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. There were people that were members of this church that followed the doctrine of this church, the things what we stood for. They left. Some of the first things they started doing, they put their pants on. They put their makeup on. They put the jewelry on. They start doing everything, and now they look like sinners. They start doing the fingernails with all the paint and the diamonds and all that other stuff. And Jeremiah 4 and 30 said, when thou art small, what would I do? He said, you're going to rent your faith. You know what rent? That means they ain't just doing it. You're just going to look like a servant. You're going to rent yourself with paint. You're going to put on crimson. You're going to hang gold and silver on you. Then they got some people that, when the Bible, when Paul said, not with gold. Some folks said, well, he didn't say silver. <laughs> Everybody said it to you. <laughs> well, he didn't say silver. Okay, so if you, since he didn't say gold. Yeah. <laughs> you, we have, you, have to, you have to read this. You have to rightly. 
the word of truth. I gave you tonight what God gave me. I trust and hope that you have been blessed from this word. I know I have. This series is going to uncover a lot of things. You all may not believe this. There's a lot of preachers that used to stand for holiness. They're no longer standing. And I'm going to tell you all something. When you start compromising a little leaven, it leaven the whole lump. I don't know about you all. A lot of, I know this for a fact. Somebody might say, well, our old forefathers, they didn't know the scripture and they didn't know that. They may not have been able to explain. Sometimes they would be reading or saying something and they would run up on a word and they couldn't say it and they would just say hard word, hard word, and they skip over it. Maybe y'all have heard that. I'm talking about in the country. I'm talking about in the country. They say hard word. That means don't, don't ask me what hard word you know. I'm not going to even try to pronounce. And they just go on and keep doing what they're doing. But let me tell you something. A lot of those old preachers, when they couldn't read it right, they had the anointing. They had the power of God in their life. I remember my mother, my mother was raised in the Christ Holy Sanctified Church. And the uh, bishop, I believe it was Judge King, Bishop King. And she said one night they were at a campground meeting. And said this man had cancer in his jaw and had eaten a hole in his jaw. And he could drink water and he had to keep a towel on the side because water would literally run out the side of his jaw. And but uh, Bishop King told him, he said, go get me a piece of steak. Somebody went and got a piece of meat. He took that meat pulled, and they stuck it in that hole and right there on the campground. That cancer ate that steak up. And she said, when it finished, it was nothing left but a scar. Right there in front of everybody. Oh. They had power. They spoke to demons. They, they didn't sit up, Satan loose the man, singing and serenade. They just told it, come out. No one need to know your name. Come out. Shut up. Come out. Demons tremble. Those were me and Bishop, uh, Bishop Charles Harrison Mason of Churches of God in Christ. I believe in Jersey City, they were having a campground meeting. And Bishop Mason walked out on the campground. He said, Lord, I know you're here. He said, but for the benefit of these that are around you. He said, I want you to shake the campground. They said, the ground started trembling. He said, Lord, shake it one more time. The ground started trembling. I'm talking about the power of God. The power of God. I'm not talking about what somebody told me. I can speak for Apostle Rogers. Before the Lord even called me to the ministry, one day we was having a youth rally, and there was a mother sitting about the fourth row down, and God gave me a gift, and it scared me, and I didn't know how to handle it. But God bless. I had my, uh, Ella Jones was my pastor, and he kept me. He taught me how. He said, son, he said, when the Lord say something to you, say it. But when the Lord stop talking, shut up. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, you tell her what I said. I said, God, I can't tell this woman that. I'm standing down in front of the offering table. I wasn't a preacher. I didn't even get behind the, up in the pulpit because we were taught that was sacred ground. You don't even go up there playing. You wait till the pastor come down before you shake it. Kids don't run up in there. And I'm standing there in front of everybody. Packed house. Mother sitting there old enough to be my grandmother. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, you call and tell her what I told you to tell her. I called. I said, mother, come here. I came in, he didn't give me the embarrassment, nothing. And I whispered in her ear. I said, the Lord told me to tell you that the man that you stand with is not your husband. And she dropped her head and started crying. I ain't talking about what somebody told me. I'm talking about what I know. He told me to tell her. And I whispered in her ear. I said, the Lord told me to tell you that the man that you're staying with is not your husband. Another young lady was telling her mother that she was going up to the college to, to work or to study at the library. She was meeting a young backslidden preacher. And the Lord showed me, and he showed she was a light-skinned girl, and he showed me her. She was in, it was a, in a bathroom. The towel on the floor, the corners were turned up, and all around the wall was filthy, and it was one of those bathtubs with the legs on it. It was cut in half, and it was sideways like that, and her body was hanging out, and she was light-skinned, and her body was, uh, her body was naked, and her skin was just dirty. The Lord said, you tell her what I told you. I went to back to YPW that night, and I told her what the Lord told me. And she dropped her head and started crying. And she said, please don't tell my mother was, oh, and her mother's in the church, her daddy was a deacon. I told her, I said, you tell him, 
the Lord said he know and if he don't do something about it he's going to fix it at, of course that Tuesday night we came back to church I asked her I said did you tell him she said I couldn't I said the Lord said he's going to fix it he was messing around with a Caucasian girl he and another man young man and they got busted together and she screamed rape he got 20 years let me tell you all something God is real I could tell you more than that but I'm not going to put no glory in myself I glory in the God that I serve and that's why I'm telling people listen to what I'm saying we have to maintain our character we have to maintain our stand for holiness that's like when you go to the store sister when you see something and it's off the edge of the perimeter reel yourself back in no I can't buy that brothers when you and you know say that no that ain't holy now reel yourself back in don't allow yourself to stay out there on the perimeter because you know what one of them big gauze or something gonna get you and you're gone then I ain't getting no help right now this is why you have to work on your holiness you have to work on you you have to and see all of us know us and something the Lord it ain't scripture something the Lord's gonna deal with because of the holiness that's in you the Holy Ghost is in you it's gonna check you and say you can't do this why I said you can't. And the closer you get to God, the more God's going to trim you down. The more he's going to make you ready for battle. I'm saying this when I'm closing. My cousin, he went to the United States Marine. When he got out of high school, he played center on a football team. And when he came back home from boot camp, and that boy had to dress blues on I looked at him, looked like, looked like he was going to pop. Looked like somebody took him in and carved him. And I know what he looked like when he left. Man, when he came back from Camp Pendleton, that boy, and he was standing up there with all that stuff. Oh, I said, oh, boy, what did they do to you? They made a soldier out of him. You know what? He went in one thing, but he came out something else. What am I saying to her? When we got saved, we came in one thing. Oh, but look at us now. I'm getting ready to pray for somebody. I know my time is up. Lord, help us. Lord, help us. Lord, help us. Oh, God, I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. My job here is to save some. It's not about me. I'm here on this earth until my time is up. Then I'm going home to be with my God. I don't need no resuscitation or nothing like that. When my time comes, I'm going home to be with my God. My tour of duty is up. And I can't go until he says it's my time. Man's extremity is God's. This world is not my home. Tonight, I gave you his. I gave you what God gave me. I'm getting ready to pray for somebody in our viewing audience. Perhaps you're not saved tonight. Perhaps you are saved. Some, perhaps the devil has been fighting you. You've been, you, and let me tell you something. Evil communication corrupts good manners. You run with the wrong folk. You run with a bunch of, I call them flaky saints. You run with a bunch of flaky, you know what they'll do? They'll persuade you to come pick up some of their habits. That's why you have to re, 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 uh, reel yourself in. The current, before you know the current, sometime in a boat. Sometime the boat in the, man, the boat got you. Hit, hit, get your troll motor. Hit, hit, go on back up there where you were. You ain't got, well, how did I get way down there? That's it. Spiritually, spiritually, it's easy to get there. It's easy to get out there. You don't even know. You don't. You get caught. You don't. Even, how did I get? The, the current got picked up. See, when the devil wants you, you know what he do? He he, he picks the current up. The wind, high, the ripples get higher, and before you know it, you 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 were just sitting like this, just doing it. Now you you doing this. You doing this. He he taking you further on out there. But oh, really, I'm back in. Really, I'm back in. I'm trying my best to quit. Holy Ghost just keeps sticking a little bit thing in there. And, 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 and this is the thing that I, I need to leave with us and those of you in my viewing audience. Don't always look at it as a sin. That's when the Bible said, let us aside every weight and the sin which do it so easily beset us. It don't have to be a sin, but it can be a weight for you. Ain't getting no help right now. Them, them, them britches are uh-huh. They can, they can make you want to do different stuff. Uh-huh. Yeah. 
back in the day. Hot pants. Y'all that. Y'all don't want to. Y'all, oh, Pastor, I didn't live. Yeah, some of y'all lived back when they. Hot pants. <laughs> what? Folk getting quiet now. I'm talking about the Dukes. Some, some folk were the Duke Dukes. That means they were Dukes to the second power. They cut them up high, split them wide. They get no hair. Folk, folk, help me, help me, Lord. Make me want to holler, throw up both my hands. No, no, we're going to stay in this. We're going to stay in this. I'm getting ready to pray for somebody right now. God, in Jesus' name, right now, you see the need. You see the need. Those that are hanging on, God, help them to reel themselves back in. Those that are fighting the good fight of faith in that, and that, that enemy is trying to seduce them. Give them strength. Give them overcoming spirits. Give them a craziness for you that they can't even hear the devil's voice. Help them to clear the house, to empty out everything where they can say, you don't have nothing in me. I'm free. I'm delivered. Tonight, God, we pray for our viewers, those that are not saved. God, save them right now. Fill them with the Holy Ghost. Those that are sick in their body, give them a miracle. And we thank you for it. Those that need a way made, do it in Jesus' name. And we thank you for it. God, we give you glory. We give you praise. We give you honor. There it is, my brothers and my sisters. I gave you what God gave me. I've enjoyed you tonight. You just wait till we get to next Wednesday night. It's going to be on. And I'm giving you a special invite to be with us this weekend. The hour of export. Boy, you're talking about a time. It's going to be the night of export. God's going to move. He's going to move. He's going to deliver. And he's going to set free. Inviting you to be with us on Sunday morning. Service starts at 11 o'clock. Every Sunday evening, service starts at 730. You don't have a problem. All you need is faith in God until we come your way again next time. I want you to do something for me. Go with God. And I promise you, God will go with you. Be blessed. Somebody give him some praise tonight. Give him some praise. Ah. Hallelujah. People of God, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Be ye steadfast. Be locked in. Be alert. On point, unmovable, always abounding. With it, rear yourself in. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Keep your whatever God gave you to do, do that. But do it with simplicity. Give it all you got. Be an example of everybody that's around you. Young people, be example to other young people, middle-aged folk. Be examples on your job, wherever you be. Be an example of holiness. Don't be one thing and then be something else. Don't let people see you knowing you as this. And then all of a sudden, oh, what happened? You destroy your reputation. When people know you and they say, you this, you did, you've been this, all this, and then all of a sudden now, you hear pastors, let me tell you something. Pastors are coming up saying stuff now. God is revealing to them that it didn't take all of that. Holding these preachers. It don't take all of that. It's going to take this and then some. Amen. You know what saints are looking for? We, we, we're tired of being different. We're tired of people talking about us, laughing at us. We're tired of looking peculiar. But that's who we are. That's who we are. I'm telling you. I'm, I'm going to say this and I'm, I'm, I'm moving on. So as far as that, we were coming from that funeral Saturday. And we stopped at that Cheddar's restaurant on Interstate 20. It's going to be a long time. I'm going to have to be real hungry before I go back in there. That's a black folk restaurant. Man, them Negroes will come in in their pants hanging off their behind. Smelling just like they had. They pulled the last draw on that, and that, on the doobie and thumped it out in the grass. Come in there. On the door open. You just smell, God, you smell all that dope. You smell, and they just come in in there. Oh, God, I, I can't believe this. People coming. Later, we were sitting down in the pit. Later, come down the stair. Group with him. A, a man was behind. Him. He spoke. I guess you know. I looked like I had my hat and everything. We just come from the funeral, and he spoke, and I spoke back. She spoke, and she had a split up to here. The eyes look like orange peel, cellulite, and all that stuff. I said, My God, cover that stuff up. You. 
People come in and that stuff just busting loose, hanging out and all kinds of stuff. I'm saying, you know, kids in there about to tear the blinds down off the windows. I'm saying, what kind of stuff is this? I said, Jesus, I was born at the wrong time. I was about to go crazy. They wouldn't eat my kids. I told Sister Roth, I told Sister Roth, I said, I'm having a hard time. She said, what do you mean by I'm having a hard time. I'm having a hard time sitting in here watching all this stuff. And it sounded like Chuck and Cheese. Ain't no restaurant. Hey, I'm talking like, like it was a, a kid's playhouse. Oh, just folks just at the top just screaming, laughing, and talking. He said, this is supposed to be a restaurant. People of God, what I'm saying is this world is in bad shape. Jokers coming up in their pants, wait, pants down under here. And I said, oh, no, God, no, no, no. Don't let nothing fall. Don't let nothing. Jesus, don't get close to my table. Thanks be to God to give us the victory. I'm praying for the saints of God right now. I hope y'all, I hope y'all do some studying. Amen. Now this deal is not going to be a open mic where we can talk. I'm going to teach this, but I want you to do your research, Amen. so you're not sitting up here looking at me like a calf at a new gate. And don't think I'm just going to give you a whole bunch of scripture. I gave you something to jumpstart you. Uh huh. So I'm like, well, Pastor, I'm just going to get your notes. The devil is a liar. You ain't getting my notes. You ain't getting my notes. You're going to do some studying. We're going to, and, and see, and God know, God know. Let me tell you something. The Lord gave me this. I told Pastor Benson. I said, Pastor, the Lord gave me this. He said, study. Rightly divide the word. People got this thing messed up. And if y'all let me say it, I'm going to be off the air. If y'all just let me say it. 